friends uh, today i am going to present uh, one lecture on acid soils and particularly with reference to india but uh, that doesn't mean that you know apart from the introduction rest of the things you know uh, when you listen to this video you'll find it's general for all purpose there are there will be some examples there will be some data there will be some you know management practices to how to ameliorate you know this uh, soil so this is a request you know somebody requested me to put acid soils um, or problematic soils or salt affected soils or saline soils so this is the first video on request uh, so i am putting acid soils uh, reference to india but there will be some general purpose for this so if i ask you what is the total um, you know geographical area of this country is 29 million hectare out of which you know acid soils you know one of the degraded soil of india so out of the 329 million hectares we approximately we say that you know 120 million hectares are degraded soils and acid soil is one of the chemically degraded soil you can say and it covers around you know around 18 million hectares of the total geographical area of this country india and which soils we call it acid soils particularly you know less than 6.5 ph less than 6.5 are acid soil and and whatever i am going to tell you here or mention so our amelioration practices it is a ph between 4.5 to 6.5 because below 4.5 what you call acid uh, soils that cat clays or you know that type of soil is very difficult to you know more expensive but whatever i mention here mostly it is physically possible for four, greater than 4.5 to less than 6.5 and you know that in acid soils so plant availability nutrients you know directly or indirectly are affected due to soil acidity and particularly those you know calcium and magnesium and uh, the secondary nutrient phosphorus the primary one as well as molybdenum, boron, zinc, you know, these soils, you know, these micronutrients also you'll find, uh, and some cases also aluminum. But it is important to, you know, take care of this soil because it's a significant area that is affected by soil acidity. And what are those areas? You know that, you know, acid soils, as I mentioned earlier, also it is prevalent in high rainfall areas, means subtropic and tropical areas of this country northeastern states then eastern states odisha west bengal some parts then some parts you know southern india kerala you know you know that high rainfall area so it is very much prevalent in you know around 20 million hectares what i mentioned sorry uh, around 18 million hectares what i mentioned are affected by soil acidity but do you have any idea how acid soils are formed i'm giving you you know um uh, some you know points you, because I am not having any chalk or blackboard, whiteboard, white markers, another thing I have. So simply you have to remember uh, how they are formed. One is leaching of the bases I mentioned earlier due to heavy rainfall. Heavy rainfall area, if there are latex or soil, so all the bases will leach down the profile. When there is no base, then definitely you know that acidity will increase. And that's what is the reason. Then, second reason is the acidic parent materials, just like acid granite rocks and during the soil formation that also imparts you know acid soils then drastic weathering of rocks in the humid area due to high rainfall as well as you know as uh, acid farming fertilizers that is nitrogenous fertilizers like ammonium sulfate or ammonium nitrate you know this four point and fifth one is lateralization portulizations these are all you know pedogenic process I leave it to you what is lateralization and what is portulization. You just, you know, go through a book and read it. And definitely it is, um, I, I mean to say, you'll find in, um, you know, when you study pedology, all those things. And uh, also accumulation of undecomposed organic matter because the when uh, they're not properly decomposed, they release, you know, weak acids, organic acid all the time. and in the swampy and marshy land also sometimes they are contribute to soil acidity so you got the points now what is the soil forming factors for soil acidity you know acid soils are formed due to this type of activities 
sorry so um if soils are acidic then definitely it is not easy to grow all you can grow crops but you may not get the desired result you know i mean to say that productivity is not good so what are those constraints to uh, crop productivity in acid soil there are some you know uh, physical constraints as well as chemical constraints um, if you consider the physical constraints related to the leaching of bases that means the soil is you know light pressure and it allows the you know bases to leach down the profile that means coarse textured soils having high macro pore bigger size pores that allow the bases to leach down the profile then low in organic matter and poor soil structure definitely yes when the soil structure is not good when binding agents are not there definitely it also a physically constrained soil high permeability and infiltration infiltration is downward entry of the water into the profile and permeability into the profile so when water moves down the profile very easily it will take all the bases down so this is also one type of physical constraints means highly permeable soils and low moisture holding capacity means low water holding capacity that means it has you know clay content is definitely less because already i told you this coarse textured soil so when i say coarse textured soil that means water holding capacity definitely will be less and uh, in these soils you will find formation of crust all those things you know um in red, uh, red and laterite soils you know they are also falling into this category and um, uh, so uh, these are all production constraints um, and physical constraints and chemical constraints already i mentioned a few at the beginning when i introduced but i want to mention one by one as I told you, due to coarse texture soil leaching of nutrient, this is also chemical nutrients are lost through leaching. Then, due to pH is low, due to low pH, what happened? You know, phosphorus, you know, availability also decline because presence of iron, aluminium, you know, oxides or sexual oxides that makes you know two compounds, variscite and stengite. You just see the formula of variscite and stengite, and they also you know keep the you know. Uh, that they are immobile they make the sub phosphorus immobile just that's why phosphorus availability and fixation is very high you have to remember low availability of phosphorus and fixation then toxicity of iron and aluminium you know sometimes you know ferrous ferric that toxicity will be there sex oxides will be there and uh, low organic matter content in this type of soil due to high rainfall but leaching of the bases and lower coarse texture so organic matter usually low and already I mentioned deficiency of uh, that secondary nutrients like calcium, magnesium, and the micronutrients like, like uh, what I mentioned earlier is molybdenum, boron, and zinc. And you'll find iron toxicity as I mentioned earlier. So nutrient imbalance will be very much there. So that means uh, it has, since the base saturation is low, so it has low cation exchange capacity. And uh, what type of clay? As I mentioned earlier, clay content is so it is kaolinite of clay you will find. Dominant dominant clay is kaolinite, and sexual oxide clay fractions will also be there. That's uh, you know having low water retention capacity. So you have to mention see why there is low water retention capacity. One is kaolinite type of clay. Second is you know clay content is also very low, and because it's mostly coarse coarse textured soil, light textured soil, and um, as I mentioned also, low level of base substance because of leaching of bases. So you got both physical and chemical constants. So now we have to how to manage management of acid soils. So um, you will find, you know, in acid soils, you grow rice, pulses, and coarse cereals, and many cases. So most important is liming is important for, uh, you know, maintaining soil pH because of presence of calcium so it increases the pH and improves availability of um, plant nutrients are also improve crop growth and nutrient uptake also stimulate you know liming stimulates biological activity it also decreases you know aluminium toxicity and reduces toxicity of some of those elements so what I mentioned here uh, for any measure you know we need some integrated approach uh, to reduce um, you know soil acidity so if you want to manage the acid soils so i am just going for some integrated approach which includes both 
chemicals as well as uh, some agronomic as well as some uh, engineering approaches maybe structural engineering you may have to uh, you know make some burns all those things so in chemical measures as i mentioned you we are talking about ph greater than 4.5 and less than 6.5 for these soils so liming is most important sorry and uh, uh, in this case you know uh, with liming material improves soil ph base status character and exchange capacity and also you know reduces the toxicity of iron aluminium and manganese in this soil solution and also phosphorus fixation also reduced to liming biological activity also increases so altogether the crop growth development as well as yield and biological activity also increases so um this is one this chemical measures means application of liming or liming you can say the next is you know uh, make some structural uh, in this uh, you know bonds and uh, you may say engineering structures and in that case you may go for you know contour or strip cropping bench terracing because in slope area then region furrow methods and conservation tillage means you know conservation tillage means um, no tillage with residue retention at the surface that also most important thing you know that uh, you know what happens you know that maintains a good organic matter and that also reduces many toxic effect of many elements because the organic matter bound with some of those uh, mic uh, micronutrients and fertilizer they also make available secondly um, you know due to presence of organic matter uh, due to release of you know lubic acid some acids so phosphorus availability also will increase so the fixation of phosphorus will also be reduced so there is benefit there are many benefits of conservation tillage then raised beds you know and in situ water con harvesting stuff there are many and uh, uh, definitely don't know about recycling these are all very common things it is applicable to all uh, and um, if there is compaction you may go for chiseling the link could be you know at the depth of 30 to 40 cm because it's subsoil because of light texture clay migration will be there subsoil uh, compaction will be there so you can reduce that compaction also in this type of soil and uh, um, and you can have interval of you know 50 to 100 uh, centimeter interval and depth you may you know subsoil means it is 30 to 40 centimeter you go about that and some of the agronomic measurements you know it so chemical engineering structural then agronomic measurements what you have to do you have to go for application of organics those organics could be farmyard manure green manure compost and also you know that means that improves the structural stability of the soil it improves the structural stability of the addition of organics as well as inclusion of legume in the crop rotation also and mulching also one line one important things you can go for this and there are also mulches like powder groundnut shell paddy husk before seeding you know to control you know um, uh, crust formation and improves you know seed, seedling emergence then there are people also do you know addition of tank sealed other things to increase water retention because tank seal contains some amount of clay as well as you know tank means pond silt siltation of ponds there that can be used so you can also because their light texture of bulk density is very high and micro pores bigger size pores are more so you can go for you know decreasing the bulk density improvement of uh, soil structure improvement of water holding capacity and hydraulic conductivity due to application of organic matters and legumes in the cropping systems so other things also then most important thing you know sometimes it is applicable to all types of soil crop rotations cropping system you know crop diversification these are all you know very much uh, you know uh, agronomic practices that are used by people all over the world so now um, if i if you ask me what are those crops that can be grown in this type of soil probably i will ask you okay if proper liming everything is taken care of you can go for pigeon peas so i mean in some cases you know high response from you know to liming is um, cotton also groundnut gram lentil maize wheat so it's depend but low response mostly barley and upland rice so you remember these things and um, though there are other things that can be you know applied to these acid soils um, 
uh, I mean to say that uh, you may go for you know um, paper mill sludge or um, basic slag from the iron industry or steel industry there and coir peat. There are many things you can add um, for management of uh, this type of soil and it has been proven by many and many people. They have done research work that basic slag also import and uh, you know they also provide some basis that's what actually improves you know soil ph when soil ph increases as i mentioned you earlier in my video ph between 6.5 7 if you can take the crop uh, take the soil ph to that level most of the nutrients are available you know that i mentioned the factors affecting you know uh, nutrients available in soils so it is not um, that uh, difficult you know once you maintain or uh, application of liming, manures, organic uh, uh, matters, straws, uh, crop residue, compost. So all these fact management practice that I mentioned here. So if you follow these type of things, definitely it will help in, you know, improving uh, soil pH. I mean, that means it will be a non-soil pH, thus the crop, the soil can be managed properly. And the problems and the constants, both physical, chemical, or maybe biological constants that will be reduced so thank you friends thank you for watching and uh, i'm happy that you know uh, this channel is doing well and uh, you people are getting some information and um, i mean to say that in this you know there are so many data points and there, there are so many things i mentioned here and uh, described all the managed practices that will help you in short questions long questions as well as dash fill up anything you know questions you want to know about soil acid soils so definitely it will help you so thank you for watching and um, i'm grateful to you that you people are liking the video and offering good comments and side by side offering suggestions for more definitely i go for 100 uh, videos for you so thank you keep watching stay safe and uh, covid time i always mention that so stay home take care of your health so thank you very much have a great day bye, -bye.